Happy Holy Hump Day on this March 3rd, everyone. I'm Pastor Robert and welcome to this midweek time where I can share some spiritual thoughts and reflections with you. Today happens to be the Saint Day, March 3rd, for John and Charles Wesley. They were brothers and they lived in England in the 1700s and they were both Anglican priests and they are both given credit to starting the Methodist movement or what we know today as the United Methodist Church. And John and Charles Wesley worked very well together as brothers in helping to start the Methodist movement John was more of the preacher and the organizer of the movement, and Charles was more of the musician and the hymn writer, and he would take the theology of Methodism and put it into hymn form. And so I'm here in our beautiful sanctuary, and in our hymn book, you'll notice if you uh, look up the author of authors of the different hymns, Charles Wesley has written many of the hymns that we find in our hymnal. And I think that's a beautiful thing uh, that we can sing our faith and sing our uh, Methodist uh, perspective of faith as well. And so we uh, thank Charles Wesley for, for helping us to do that even today. And uh, John was, as I said, more of the preacher and the organizer. And John had a passion for uh, reforming the Anglican Church from within by having what he called classes, or bands, he would call them. We today would call them small groups, and we offer small groups in our church, and we're offering these through Zoom because of COVID-19, but at least we are still able to meet uh, online. And small groups are such an important part of who we are as United Methodists, and it's because of John Wesley. So he encouraged uh, people to get together um, in addition to attending worship on Sunday morning, and he really felt it was important for uh, Christians to come together and help hold each other accountable in the faith, encourage one another, pray for one another, and just kind of check in with each other uh, how you're doing in your faith. And that's pretty much what our small groups do today. So if you ever wonder why we emphasize small groups, well, it's because that's part of our history as Methodists. And it's also very biblical for Christians to meet together and to share together and encourage one another in the faith. And so I just thought it would be important for us on this uh, Saint Day for John and Charles Wesley to just think about what makes Methodism distinctive and unique and why do we emphasize certain things? Um, well, it's because of John and Charles Wesley and these are very important things and in no particular order, I think I wrote down six things and I just have some notes here that I want to go over of what makes Methodism uh, distinctive. And the first thing is what I've already talked about, those classes, those holy bands they were called, and we call them small groups, um, because it is important for us to meet in addition to Sunday worship, where we can encourage one another and support one another in the faith. And I would say the second distinctive thing of Methodism is that we are people of warm hearts. When John Wesley um, had his Aldersgate experience, he said that he felt his heart strangely warmed. And what he meant by that was he had an assurance that God loved him and that Jesus died on the cross for him. And he knew in his heart in that moment that um, God had claimed him. And so that's something that, that we celebrate too, that we can have an assurance in our faith that we belong to God. We are a people of warm hearts. Um, the third thing I think that makes us a little bit distinctive is John Wesley's emphasis on prevenient grace. Prevenient is a Latin word that means to go before. So John Wesley emphasized how God's grace goes before our awareness of it oftentimes. And that's why we baptize infants, because we believe that God reaches out to us before we're even aware of God's grace in our lives or God's grace at work in our lives. And I just think that's an incredible concept that God reaches out to us before we reach out to God so that we can know in any given moment that God is there for us and we just need to be open to uh, seeing God's presence in each and every moment. So God's prevenient grace, the grace that goes before us. 
And then I think the fourth thing that I think is very distinctive is John Wesley's quadrilateral approach to understanding the scriptures. So when we read the scriptures, we don't read the scriptures in a vacuum. We have uh, uh, lenses to look um, at the scriptures through. And those lenses are um, experience, how we've experienced God at work in our lives. And we all have unique experiences, which is why small groups are important too, where we can share those uh, individual experiences of how we see God at work. Um, so our experiences help us to interpret and understand the scriptures. And then John Wesley also believed that tradition, church tradition, was very important because how has the church viewed uh, different passages of scripture over the centuries? And then the third thing John Wesley uh, believed about with the quadrilateral, which is the fourth part of the quadrilateral, is reason and how we are called to use our minds. And John Wesley said that the uh, biblical faith is meant to be seen in a rational kind of way. And so we are to use our reason in understanding the scriptures. So that's the quadrilateral. We start with scripture, but we also look at scripture through the lens of our experience and also through church tradition and through the use of reason. So the quadrilateral would be um, another distinctive feature of Methodism. And then I think a fifth uh, component of what makes Methodism unique is our emphasis to balance personal faith with good works. So we do believe that it's important for us to have this personal uh, relationship with Jesus Christ, but we also believe that needs to be balanced with reaching out beyond ourselves and to do good works and to share God's love with others. So it's not just about me and Jesus, it's about uh, me living out my faith. It's about us living out our faith and making a difference in our community and world. So it's faith and good works together, uh, not one over against the other. And then I think the sixth very important feature of Methodism is the um, emphasis on Christian perfection. Uh, John Wesley believed that if we really focus on our faith and living out our faith and reading scripture and praying and attending worship and all of these other uh, ways that we could move on to uh, loving uh, God and loving our neighbor in a beautiful way. And I don't think John Wesley um, knew of too many people who had ever reached Christian perfection, but he said that it is a goal that we should all seek to attain. And I just think that's really a great feature of Methodism, uh, that we encourage one another to keep reaching that goal of loving God, loving our neighbors uh, as completely uh, as possible. So those are the six features that I think are important. The classes, the small groups, that's the first one. Uh, the having the warm hearts, the assurance that God loves us, number two. The third one is prevenient grace, how God is reaching out to us before we're even aware of God reaching out to us. Uh, the fourth one is the quadrilateral approach to the Bible by using experience, uh, church tradition, and reason in interpreting the Bible. And then the fifth one is the balance between our personal faith and living out our faith through good works, and then uh, seeking to attain Christian perfection by loving God and our neighbor as, as much as we possibly can. So um, we do want to celebrate our Saint Day for John and Charles Wesley today on this March 3rd. And then I do invite you to be part of our uh, 1030 in-person and online worship this Sunday as we continue in our season of Lent series on wilderness challenges. We'll be focusing on our passion and what it means to have a passionate faith. This Sunday also means that we will be having Holy Communion. And so I invite you, if you are there in your home watching online, to have grape juice and bread ready there, and we will commune together. If you're here in person for our masked and socially distant distance uh, worship service, we will have small uh, individual containers that you can use with the wafer and the juice. So we invite you to be part of our worship this Sunday. And I just pray that um, you will have a blessed day and that we will continue to have a Lent where we are growing closer and closer in loving God and our neighbor in all that we say and do.